back, my Canadian cousins. How are you today? So I am getting back to music today, and we're going to look at a Canadian band that is one of my favorite classic rock bands, The Guess Who. I did not know that The Guess Who was Canadian, and I have been a fan of theirs really most of my adult life. You know, I recall getting a cassette tape of the guess who's greatest hits when i was a teenager and had it in my car for a long time and listened to it frequently it was like great road trip music um, for me but for some reason i never dove deeply into the band's backstory and who they were i mean i did know the name burton cummings um and i loved his voice but i didn't know he was canadian and i only recently learned that randy bachman or Bachman, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I know like Bachman Turner Overdrive is the way people say that, but I saw an interview that said that he actually pronounced it Bachman. But in any case, I had no idea that Randy Bachman Bachman was the same person who was in BTO, also a Canadian band, which I also only learned since doing this channel. So, you know, although I know these bands and these aren't reactions, like first time reactions from people who don't know classic rock and are only learning, they tend to be a bit younger <laughs> than I am. Um, I am looking at these bands from a new perspective of their Canadianness and of what uh, Canada has contributed to the musical culture of the world um, and North American mus musical culture, especially with rock bands like this. Um, so we're going to take a look at the song No Sugar Tonight. A new mother nature they're they're a combined song and the the reason why is one of my favorite um songs from the guess who but also i just feel that it's very unique the only other song i could think of that's like it is a day in the life by the beatles where it starts off with one song paul mccartney singing goes into another song with john lennon singing and then comes back to the paul mccartney part of the song and this is similar, except that at the end, they sort of go through an overlapping of the two in doing sort of like what a, what you would do with a round, like we learned as, as kids in school. But anyway, I did look at an interview from a guy named Professor of Rock, and there's a very interesting backstory to this song. I'm going to post a link for the interview. I'm not going to play any part of it here because I feel like I, if I do, I'll, I'll probably get blocked and I don't want that. But the interview is great and it's relatively recent and I urge you to uh, to check it out. But <laughs> wait until you're done watching my video, please. Anyway, yeah, so Randy Bachman told a story about how it was his first time in Haight-Ashbury in San Francisco uh, during the Vietnam War and he was wearing a... I, I, a Canadian maple leaf pin with a peace sign or something like that. And some veterans who were clearly sort of rough around the edges, didn't like that. I guess he said that he supposed they were resentful that, um, you know, after he played his shows, he'd go back up to Canada and be, not be at risk of being drafted into the war. And so uh, they started to harass him a little bit. And then a car pulls up and it was, it was, uh, the wife of one of these rough guys and the um, the other two squirmed away and she starts screaming at him that he's supposed to be out looking for a job and he's not doing that and he's just hanging out with his friends and having coffee and not doing anything and uh, she's at home watching the kids and etc cetera, etc cetera. and so she shouted at him once he got in the car and another thing there'll be no sugar for you tonight um, so he understanding what she meant, wrote this song, um, but couldn't be explicit in it for the times because it would have been too risque. So I thought that was a hilarious little anecdote about how that song was born. And, you know, of course, uh, American Woman is their most famous song and one of the probably top 100 most popular famous classic rock songs altogether. And it was very interesting because they told the story about how they wrote that song too. Um, and uh, Randy Bachman had broken a guitar string while they were playing at a uh, curling rink in, in Brampton, Ontario, before they were famous. And so he had to stop the show to change the guitar string. And while he was tuning the string, he just started playing a, a riff that had come to him, which was the riff to uh, American Woman. And 
Burton Cummings um, was out in the parking lot and he heard it and he thought they were going back on stage and he rushed back on to realize that he was just tuning his guitar string and playing this riff that he thought was really cool. And so he just started riffing himself with, with lyrics that were mostly nonsensical, but he said that, you know, the, the, the American woman part of it, you know, stay away from me, that sort of thing came from the fact that they had played in the United States in, in small towns where a lot of the um, men were not around because they were serving in the military during the Vietnam War had gotten drafted. And so <laughs> these American women were throwing themselves at, at them. And, uh, and that's how that lyric came to his mind. So really cool backstory. Look, look at the whole interview with these two. It was great. Uh, Professor Rock, it'll be in the link to the description. Without further ado, my friends, let's get into the song. And uh, I think on the outro to this video, I will see if I can learn a little bit of the drum parts to this song to uh, carry us out. All right, my friend. Oh, and always please remember to like and subscribe if you're so inclined and enjoy the intro to this song of us listening to my actual vinyl of this song. All right. See you on the flip side. <laughs> doesn't get tiring listening to it through headphones too is really cool because it started out in the uh, right ear and then the bass and drums picked up in the left ear and then they both came in once the singing came in it sounded awesome just the the the, the power of the bass and the drums is a very strong rhythm section uh complemented by the strength of his voice it's just so cool I have to comment for educational purposes. Anyway, listen, 
Um, this is so cool. The, I don't know how these two songs go together so well because they weren't written together, apparently. Um, Bachman wrote No Sugar Tonight and uh, Cummings wrote um, the uh, New Mother Nature, but then they just put them together. Yeah, and they did it separately without a plan to put them together, but they just went together so well. How unique is that? That is so cool. I'll never get tired of that. Mother Nature taking over. It's the new splendid lady come to call. It's the new Mother Nature taking over. She's getting us all. She's getting us all. fade wow my friends i was enjoying that so much i really didn't want it to end uh <laughs> it goes fast for a relatively long song of the time that was would have been on the radio they were you know they generally kept songs relatively short um so listen if you have any experiences with the guess who if you've ever seen them live if they're one of your favorite bands if they've been uh you know if their music in, reminds you of a certain time in your life um if you've seen them live if you've uh, met any of them let me know let's talk about it okay so i will attempt a little bit of uh to learn a little bit of a cover of this song at least a few minutes of it and play it for you now on my way out i hope to see you soon my friends peace Oh